Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Amal Nergodkar. I'm the CEO of Patient Prism. We're live here at Patient Prism Studios at the Dykema DSO event in Denver. 1,306 people in attendance. It's the first big live event in the DSO space. I'm delighted to welcome um, some of the great guests that are arriving here today and, and, and participating in this conference. One of them is somebody I've looked up to for a long time, Dr. Charles Mosier from the DEO. And I'm excited to talk to you, Dr. Mosier, about um, what's happening in this industry. So first of all, welcome to the show. And um, I'm really excited to talk to you. Yeah, well, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, we've gone through a lot over the last 18 months. Uh, you've, you've been in the thick of it through the DEO, an organization that I have loved and cherished that has given me a lot. Um, although I'm not a dentist, I'm not a DSO, I've been a traditional vendor per se. Um, I have gained a lot from just the camaraderie, uh, the, the intellectual brain power, the sharing of information, the abundance of thought that goes on. And you're an integral part of that organization, building that community of like-minded dentist entrepreneurs that are really elevating the profession. Uh, so my question to you is, what's in the store for DEO post-pandemic? I know you guys have done some virtual events, one small live event. Uh, so tell us what you guys are doing to help entrepreneur dentists really achieve the next stage of their growth. Yeah, well, I, it's very interesting, and I think that our North Star really hasn't changed you know, since the pandemic. Uh, our North Star has always been helping groups of all shapes and sizes grow and scale. And really, I think from my aspect of it, the, the one thing I keep in mind whenever I'm talking with anybody through these groups is how to have better days. Whether we're talking about financing, whether we're talking about acquisition of more locations, whether we're talking about looking for talent, it's really all about having better days for me. Uh, going to work, enjoying what you do, the predictability of the day, and then being able to share that with your team. And that's really been the focus of the DEO since well before the pandemic and then through the pandemic especially, right? Because there was so much uncertainty right. through that pandemic. And the DEO, we just really took it upon ourselves to make sure that we became a conduit of information for anybody, not just DEO members. I think that if uh, you remember, I mean, everybody was invited right. to those, to those uh, seminars, those, those podcasts, those video recordings that we did. Everybody was invited because the information just needed to be disseminated to the industry. And so now that we're kind of coming out of the pandemic, uh, it may look a bit more normal, but nevertheless, I just think that our North Star really hasn't changed. And guys like, you know, Jake Poole and Darren Akapan and some of the people like myself who have been there for a long time, really happy to be here with right. you and really right. happy to be here supporting Dykema and this amazing right. event. So that's what we're up to. How is, um, has anything, you said the North Star hasn't changed, but... Um, are your conversations different with these entrepreneurs that are scaling, right? Because what I am seeing from my vantage point is the industry is undergoing a new renaissance. I think the next five to ten years we're going to see tremendous consolidation and the advent of DSOs. You know, once we look back in, in several decades from now, we'll see, oh my God, this was this was the time period where this industry changed for the better. A better, at this time, I don't know what it is, better or worse, but I think it's better. In my view, DSOs will improve access to care. They will improve the quality of care um, if they do it correctly. Yeah, I think that's the big key there. And of course, you know, the industry uh, is going and will still continue to consolidate. But my fear at this point, I don't even really like the word fear, but I'll just throw it out there, is right now we have a huge labor problem. Correct. And, I, you know, of course, we can talk about just from the United States standpoint. It's, it's global, of course. Sure, sure. We have a huge labor problem out there. And one of the things that I'm really putting a lot of attention towards is trying to figure out, as people come back to work, what I'm fearful of is that wages are not going to go back to where they were in 2019. Right, right. So one of the things that I'm really working with groups on is – how can we actually do the same amount of work, but perhaps with fewer people? Because if we don't, if we don't help those practices that are one and two and three and four practices, right. then they're 
their P and Ls are going to look terrible because their salaries and wages are just going to be right. way, way, way right. too high. And then consolidation will happen, perhaps to people that maybe don't want to be, uh, you know, swept up. Might be up. forced. Might be forced. Right. Exactly. So there's two ways, right, to to see more patients or create is is to create time, right? Mm -hmm. We want to create time. We want to one is introduce some sort of an automation. We talked that about that. Exactly. Uh, leverage technology to right. create more time. But, but, but talk to us, I mean, you coach a lot of dental offices across the country. Talk to us about how do you optimize a schedule to make sure you're producing the highest amount and the right patients in the right chair at the right time. What is the secret? Yeah, well, from my perspective, okay. the secret is going to be leadership. And anybody that's watching this and seeing me on this podcast or th this recording is just going to be like, of course, he was going to say that. Yeah. Um, but it's leadership that flows downstream, which creates culture, okay. which allows the team to buy in okay. to that schedule. Right. So you're going to create that perfect schedule. Okay. But if you don't have the buy in from the team and you don't have that culture of, hey, let's go help people. Okay. And we're here to do that. Right. Then schedule doesn't really matter that much. Right. You know, so we've got to have a cohesive team that understands the mission and the vision of the organization. Why are we here in the first place? And let's go out there and do this. And I really think it starts at the top with with leadership and culture and core values. So what you're telling me is that if 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 your team has bought into the core values, then the, those values are going to align with shareholder value or practice value eventually. So your values are going to basically create value in the organization. Right. But you cannot start with let's create value in the organization first through oh we got to hit these numbers or we got to have these hygiene production these many uh, perio uh, SRPs. You got to really start with. How do we help a patient that's here to maybe secure same day treatment? Let's get more done while they're here. Correct. Or let's um, optimize in a way where you can finish. You you say, okay, well here's the one hour slot for let's say new patient exams, and let's optimize it in a way not that not just says you get what you need to get done, but are you moving the patient forward? That's correct. It's it's the idea of moving them towards health. And we talk about case acceptance a lot right. uh, in the DEO, and, and I do a lot of coaching with case acceptance. And, and I hear, you know, how do we increase our case acceptance? Right. And I said, well, let me ask you, Amal, if you were a, if you were a young associate dentist, right. and I came to you and I said, Amal, your case acceptance is 60%. Okay. Well, let's, let's see what that means. Because what that means is that 40% of the people that you're seeing are not getting healthy. How does that make you feel as a healthcare provider? That 40% of the people that you talk to are not doing what you request. Correct. And as a new dentist, I think it kind of hits them between the eyes a little bit when you start to think, okay, why did you go to dental school to begin with? Correct. You know, Correct. to help people. Right. And almost half of them are not taking your advice. So when we look at it that way, I think it, it allows me to now have a conversation with them hmm to talk about, okay, well, it's not about the filling. It's not about the crown. It's about health. And I think that's where I'm seeing a lot of these new DSOs where marketing is evolving towards that, hey, uh, oral health is the gateway to overall health. And we are here. I mean, I, we, I was part of an exercise recently at the DSO where we're def redefining the core values. Mm -hmm. And one of them was getting, getting people to optimal health. You can talk about dentistry. They talk about optimal right. health. Um, that's very interesting. But what about, and again, sorry, since you're so you're, you're Dennis yourself, I, I want to ask this question is, yes, okay, well, that's the case acceptance rate. But what about the diagnosis rate? Why is there such a differential difference between how dentists diagnose uh, the, whatever the patient needs? And I've seen uh, companies like Pearl and Overjet look at uh, a, a bell curve, and you're looking, they, they looked at, analysis of how many crowns were diagnosed and they're from this end of the spectrum to that end of the spectrum yeah so where is that gap and how do we how do we get these people to diagnose better yeah uh, sadly I think you're taking me into a conversation about dental schools <laughs> okay you know and the difference in philosophies across the country in different dental schools and having worked with I don't know, maybe close to a thousand associates at this point in time in my right. career and seeing them having graduated from all over the country. You're right. There is an enormous 
gap between what somebody learns on the West Coast versus what somebody learns on the oh East Coast. Okay. Um, we uh, and then of course we always say that if you if you go to ten dentists, you're going to get eleven different treatment plans. <laughs> okay, you know, and I think that's still the case. Sure. Why? I don't exactly know, but I was on a call just last night with uh, some of our DEO members getting ready for, can I plug our live, our, our immersion event that's coming up next month? It is a private member event, sure. but w uh, we were talking last night about the fact that uh, the diagnosis is all over the place because most of the organizations don't have a clear cut practice philosophy that is codified that they can say to a new associate, Here's what our philosophy is. Here's our practice philosophy. And that doesn't mean we're telling you how to do that. No, 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 not at all. Not but at this all. is our SLP on how we welcome a patient, how we look, and maybe there's a clinical SLP. Well, I was going to say, it, it, it does actually dial in more clinically right, right. that this is, you know, we do five surface composite restorations on second molars because we believe in that. Okay. And if that's the case and you do it really well, then great. Now, a lot of people out there are going, uh, five surface composite fillings on a second molar. No, we do a crown. That could be your practice philosophy. Sure. But the point is, is do what you do well. Right. And, and bring, bring that patient back to health. But again, when I asked the question on the call last night, how many of you have a practice philosophy that is actually written down that you discuss with your associates when they come in? And very few of them did. So what does that create? Well, it creates six months down the road, the owner of the organization going back to the associate and saying, why did you do that? Right. And, and, and unfortunately, the conversations go around, oh, we need to get your production high. Yes. Well, that's not, that's, that's a symptom, right? That's just a side effect. You start at the basic, and the, guys, this is the reason why you joined the DEO. <laughs> These are the conversations that are important today. Um, Dr. Mojo talks about psychology, not psychology of the patient, psychology of the clinician. And we've got to get that in alignment. Yeah. You know, we've got to really think about that. And, and these are the conversations that I've heard at the DEO and that have enabled me to build my better business. But, 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 but people from all walks of dentistry come into these uh, groups, uh, come into these events, and they share these abundantly about how are we facilitating the patient journey? How are we optimizing the patient journey? Right. How are we making the doctor happy? Nobody talks about that. The first thing you talked about, if you cannot make the doctor happy, the hygienist happy, your patients cannot be happy. And fundamentally, if you don't understand that, if you want same-store growth, which everybody talks, oh, my God, we want same-store growth, same-store growth. At the end of the day, if you, your folks haven't drank the Kool-Aid that we're moving patients to optimal oral health, then no matter how hard you try, no change, no training is going to actually stick. Okay. And, and that's why I love this. Um, I'm gonna, last question I'm gonna ask you, we could talk for a long time. Yes, we, we could. could. <laughs> sessions and sessions on all sorts of things. I have lots of questions for you. Uh, and this has been fascinating. Um, tell us about the event in Orlando and um, where should people find more information? Anybody who's watching this, if you are a single doctor, if you're a group practice that are looking to scale and really take advantage of the renaissance in dentistry, that's happening, unfolding as we speak. More dentistry is being done today than ever before. More dentistry will be done in the next five years than ever before. Yeah. And if you wanna really l grow your business, scale your business in the right way and provide fulfillment to your careers, your, your team's careers, and give the gift of health to people, the Orlando Conference is the start place to start. So tell us a little bit about that and then we'll end. Yeah, so uh, the, I would go to the deodentalgroup.com, okay. and it's going to be right there. As soon as you click enter, you're going to see all of the information to come to Orlando, come to a great conference, uh, similar to the magnificent conference that, we are, that we're at today. Uh, it'll look a lot the same. And, you know, meet guys like Darren. Talk to Darren about what we've done for people. I think we are at uh, the members of the DEO now, are at $1.6 billion in revenue annually. That's how much it's dentistry is being done by the membership of the DEO. We're, we're really, really proud of that. But I think the other thing that makes the DEO so different is I haven't met anybody in that organization that isn't willing to say, here's what we do, how are you doing it? Here's our numbers. Here's our here's the things that we're doing wrong. Here's the things that we might be getting right. You know, uh, but the ability to share and frankly, before I joined the DEO, 
I was involved in organized dentistry on a local level, and nobody, nobody, shared. nobody talks nobody about shared. those things like that. Everybody showed up to the meeting with as many people as they could to make it look like they were amazingly prosperous, yes. um, but nobody said you know how they did it or what they what they were doing. And the DEO is exactly the opposite. Everybody's so open and willing. So go to deodentalgroup.com. Yep. Register if you're not a member. Come in. Uh, experience for yourself of the abundance of thought process and and how many people just give uh, it's a great event i'm looking forward to it i've been part of that organization yeah. for and we since appreciate the beginning. that very much yeah. and uh, i look forward to seeing most of you guys there um, attend the conference I, it'll change your life and come up and introduce yourself to me i love to meet new people too so thank you dr mosher my it's pleasure a, thank honor. you very much amal thank you